church and uh, our spiritual life, the Lord's Supper. And so let me just share a few things with you uh, before we get started. The Lord's Supper has uh, really been a confusing subject for many people almost from the beginning. Actually, it was a confusing subject before the beginning. If you go all the way back, uh, uh, before the first Lord's Supper, back in uh, the book of John in chapter 6, uh, there, uh, there were some people that were taken back then by the idea of eating of the flesh of Jesus and drinking of his blood uh, because Jesus spoke of that quite a ways before he actually had that first Lord's Supper. It was back in John chapter uh, 6 and verse 53. He was speaking figuratively, figuratively of course, uh, of, of, of his life being, uh, him being the bread of life. And he makes this statement in John chapter 6, verse 53. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink the blood, ye have no life in you. Okay, so he's making this statement. This is way prior to the Last Supper. And, uh, and uh, just a few verses after that, they said in John chapter 6, verse 60, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? You see, they were kind of taken back by that subject. And then just a few verses later in, in verse 66, it says, from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And so when he began to speak of this subject, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a little bit hard to, uh, uh, for people to take. It was a little more uh, than they wanted, to ha they wanted for themselves, okay? And so, so many people uh, not, were, were not just taken back, but they, they just left, the, left him and the whole deal, walked away from it. And, uh, and so it's, it, the whole idea of eating of the flesh and drinking of the blood, though it is symbolic and though it is figurative, uh, in the scripture, it's been a point of confusion, uh, it, actually it, many times a point of contention all throughout history. You go all the way, uh, the, almost every uh, thing in, uh, uh, from century to century, many of the debates in the, of the, the early church and, and even during the, uh, the Reformation period, uh, these, this was a hot subject, okay? And even today, um, there are so many different views. Uh, from denomination to domin denomination and church to church. So I always like to, before we partake of the Lord's Supper, I don't intend to come and bring a full-blown preaching message uh, on these nights that we, we do this, but rather I always like to maybe uh, just uh, uh, speak of some things, just to put it in perspective and maybe uh, help somebody that ha has a little bit of confusion about the purpose of this and, and maybe just highlight a few things, uh, some of the truths involved with the Lord's Supper just to uh, uh, help us be better, better prepared to understand uh, what we're doing, okay? And so with that, I, I don't think I even told you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, if you will, in your Bibles. Uh, and we will, we will just look at just um, uh, four highlights, if you will, uh, or truths uh, that come out of this text that help us understand what we're about to do, okay? And 1 Corinthians 11, we'll begin in verse 23, and it says, For I have received, Paul speaking, by the way, let me just tell you that he go, go all the way back into chapter 1 and verse 2, the very introduction of this um, uh, this book that, that is written in, in uh, this epistle, uh, Paul says he's speaking to the Corinthian church. He's writing to the Corinthian church. That's the gathered assembly of people in Corinth, okay, that were called out by the Lord. Okay, with that being said, Paul says in verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, he said, This is my cup, uh, this, excuse me, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall Eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat that of that bread and drink of that cup. 
For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many are of many sleep, which means are dead. But if you would judge, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. And now there's, a, there's so much said there, and there's so much... Uh, so many truths that we could pull out of that, but I just really just want to focus on four very basic things to understand about this meal and this, uh, uh, this ordinance. Okay, first of all, it was ordained by Jesus. If you look in verse 23, Paul says the very first thing he says is, For I have received of the Lord. In that final evening before he was arrested and crucified, uh, at his last supper, the Lord Jesus Having his disciples all gathered around him, it says in Luke chapter 22 and verse 19, he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave to them saying, this is my body uh, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And so it's clear that it's an ordinance of the Lord. This isn't something that the church, after the Lord passed, decided, hey, this would be important, let's start doing this. It's not a tradition, it's an ordinance, okay, given by the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for you and I. Uh, that, there's one more ordinance given to the church, and that's baptism, and it's found over in Matthew chapter 28, of course, at the... Uh, uh, the um, a great commission where he says go ye and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost okay so there again there's those two ordinances but they are given to the church by the Lord not by the early church fathers not by the Apostle Paul not by by anybody but our Savior and our Lord that's why we're doing this we're told to he said this do and so we're told to partake of this okay the second truth is is the ordinance is intended for the church, for the gathered church. It's a, it's a family meal that gives identity to the called out people of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the church is. And if you, we're not going to rehearse it, but if you, in this chapter that we're in, if you go all the way back to verse 17, when Paul begins speaking on the subject of the Lord's Supper, all the way to the end of the chapter, which we just read, down to verse 34, Paul uses the phrase, when ye come together, five times. When ye come together. He kept saying, when ye come together. He's talking to the church, a gathered church, when you assemble. Remember, we've talked about this so many times. This building, as beautiful it is, as it is, is not the church. This, this, these bodies right here, these souls that are redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the church. And what have we done tonight? We have assembled. We're the gathered church. This, this supper was intended for us, and uh, uh, it's, 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 it's very important that we understand that. Uh, the third truth is, uh, we see is that it was intended to be a reminder. If you look at verse 24, he says, uh, this do in remembrance of me. Verse 25, he says, do in remembrance of me, okay? And so the, 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 uh, the Lord's aim was for us to keep this, um, his, his redeeming work in the forefront of our minds, in the, in the center, if you will, of our lives and our worship. It's not that he says, uh, do this in remembrance because I'm afraid you'll totally forget what I've done. That's not it. He's saying do this in remembrance to just keep it at central to your life, central to your, to, to your, your worship experience uh, and, and, and your, your walk with me. Keep this in the middle. We can, it's kind of ironic that this morning we talked about the risen Savior and, and uh, the Scripture telling, uh, the Apostle Paul telling Timothy, remember, and our responsibility is to remember that we were served a, a risen Lord. For that same reason the words are given here. Remember. You're not going to forget totally. We know that. That's not what he means. He means, remember, just be constantly reminded how important this is, okay? And so then, fourthly, and very quickly, uh, it's designed to nourish our souls. 
You know, it was never meant uh, to be an ordinance that feeds and nourishes the body. He didn't give this that so all oh, the church throughout church we could have church suppers all the time and get together so we could have the Lord's Supper. That wasn't it at all. Now it was a meal, the, the the original Lord's Supper or Last Supper. Yes, he broke bread. It was more of a meal setting. But the ordinance itself is not to nourish our body. Obviously, what we do here is not going to give any nourishment to our body, but it's for the nourishment of our souls. In fact, if you'll look at verse 34, the very last verse that we read there, he says, if any man hunger, let him eat at home. That's not the purpose of this deal. Is, and obviously, I'm, I'm telling you this, you guys are aware of that, okay, because you didn't come to get a meal this evening. But it's important that we understand that when we eat, of this bread and take of the fruit of the vine or the juice or the wine if you want to refer to it that we're doing so in faith we're eating in faith we're not eating in a physical sense of, 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 of having an appetite but we're eating in faith and exercised faith is always strengthening to our soul it gives us strength when we exercise our faith so as believers the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ are, is, is, is uh, as believers of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is something that we embrace. And when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we're exercising faith. So this is what I embrace. This is what I believe in. This is what I know has been done for me, is the, 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 the um, redeeming work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And so though it be a symbolic meal... It's also a, a meal that reminds us of, of how important the cross was. The cross, okay? The resurrection too, yes, we talked about that this morning. But this is more focused on the sacrificial death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we're doing it tonight, okay? With that being said, uh, we, uh, we'll read in verse 27. Once again, it says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Now, I just remind you from time to time when we do this that, that uh, the meaning of that is simply meaning that uh, there's some, a number of things that could cause us to be coming to this table inappropriately, if you will. One is if we're not believers, okay? It's not, it's not something to tinker around with. It's not, it looks fun, let's do it. Uh, if you're not a believer, you don't know that you're saved, then just abstain. Just, just kind of those, these guys will, will just skip you and nobody's going to make call attention to you. But don't, don't, don't participate because it's important that you understand uh, the meaning of this and it's real to you and you're doing it in faith. If you're lost, you're not doing it in faith, okay? Uh, secondly is if we are born-again Christians and we're in rebellion to Christ in our life. And we know we're in rebellion. We've got something going on that we're unwilling to, to, to fix and get right with God. And uh, our hearts are not right. Our faith is not right. Okay? And so we would not be coming to the table in, in faith the way we should be. And so we should abstain there. And it could be that, uh, that, that there's something going on in our life that's just simple. And the next verse tells us how to handle that. Verse 28, it says, But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. In other words, Paul says you can take time and just peer on the inside of your life and make sure things are right before you partake of this, this, this supper. And so we always give opportunity for just a few moments of, of, of just uh, silence. You can come to the altar if you prefer. You can pray and bow right where you are in your, uh, in your pews. But just examine yourself and say, am I ready? Am I coming to the table with faith today? Is my heart clean before the Lord? Not perfect, guys, because none of us are going to be that way coming uh, uh, to the Lord. But coming with a pure heart and a willingness to confess whatever sins we have in our life, just let's examine ourselves for a few moments, and then uh, we'll get right to uh, partaking of this supper, okay? And so you take your time, uh, and, and I will and welcome to come to the altar again if you'd like.
Father, we're so grateful, God, once again, to be a part of a church family like this, Father, your, your family. And I just appreciate so much the faithfulness of your people. And, God, when we do uh, things around here, people, uh, people want to be involved. And uh, something as important as this, Lord, your church family uh, it, it comes, it comes hearty and, and willing and exciting to be a part of this supper. And I just, I just pray that you'll bless them for that, Lord. And we know, God, there are others that are not here, and we pray that you will uh, always work in the hearts of your people and help people to grow and begin to understand the, the need for these things and the importance of these things. But the audience that we have here today, Lord, the group, the gathering, uh, they see that, and I pray that you'll bless them. Father, we thank you for the, what this means. I thank you, Lord God, for the truths that we just rehearsed and reminded ourselves of. And uh, we know, Lord, that each time that uh, we partake of this supper, that it, is, uh, it does. It, it, it gives us the fundamentals of your redeeming work and gives us something to, uh, uh, to sink our teeth in, so to speak, spiritually and nourish our souls. And so, Father, we just thank you for this ordinance. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for it and baptism that you've given our church to do. And Father, we pray that as long as we gather as a church family on this earth, that we will be able to do these things, see people saved and baptized, and Lord, to come together as a family and, uh, and enjoy uh, this, this, this meal. And so Father, uh, for the next few moments, we pray your blessings. We ask Holy Spirit that you would move in the midst of your people and uh, guide us through this meal and lord again strengthen our faith as we do so and we pray this in jesus name amen let me also if y'all ask these fellows that are going to help me to go ahead and come let me also remind you that uh, it, you're probably seated in family units uh, to maybe help the little children uh, there's not many here but to understand whether they should or should not partake of this and i'm excited to say that my granddaughter channing is getting to take the lord's supper for the first time so exciting i'm proud of her and i know that uh, I know that you'd be excited as I am about your children along the way as well and grandchildren. So, with that being said, we will get started and we'll pass out this bread.
This bread is symbolic of the body of Christ being given uh, as atonement for our sins. I'm going to ask Brother Elbert if he'll lead us in a word of prayer. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. juice is symbolic of his blood that was freely shed for our sins and I'm going to ask uh, Brother Stacy if he'll lead us in a word of prayer Scripture says, after the same manner, he also took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink of it in remembrance of me. I'll ask Brother David to come. The Scripture says in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 30, And when they had sang a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And so, Brother David will lead us. Or if you join them. If you'd stand with us, stretch across the aisle, grab somebody's hand next to you, as we always do. 
I don't want to hold your hand. Can you sing, My Jesus, I Love Thee? All right, here we go. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin, I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. Would you join me in a word of prayer, please? Lord, we love you tonight. And God, we're so grateful that you love us, that you love us deeply, so much so that you is willing to go to an old rugged cross and take the punishment given by mere mortal men. And God, on the cross, you paid the penalty for our sins. And my desire tonight, Lord, is that before we would pillow our head, that we would just get along with you and just thank you for our salvation and for loving us and for caring for us. God, we're thankful for a church that still believes in preaching the gospel and still believes in seeing people saved and still believes in baptizing and partaking of the Lord's Supper. God, I pray that you'd help us to tell others around us that they can be saved, that there is hope, that there is good news. I pray that you'd continue to strengthen our church. I pray that we'd continue to grow, not for mere number's sake, but for the fact is that we'd have a strong church here in Slayton, Texas. God, as we go to our homes, I pray that you'd put somebody on our hearts and our minds this week that can, we can share the gospel with. Once again, God, thank you for all the things you do for us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.